is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Governor DeSantis will be on the program in hour three. Isn't that correct, Mr. Producer? All right, uh, I have to jump into this every now and then, climate change. It is the number one avenue through which the Democrat Party seeks to economically destroy this country. And it started as the degrowth movement, as we've talked about, as I've written about, over half a century ago. It was hatched in Europe among many Marxist organizations. And they finally settled on the nomenclature climate change. Why? Because it's a phrase that is ambiguous. It means everything and it means nothing. And every single weather and climate event can be attributed to climate change. That is capitalism, prosperity, human beings, and America. The Democrat Party, seeking desperately to fundamentally transform America, has been using this day in and day out from the top Biden all the way down to the little miscreants in the various uh, news organizations. And here's Biden again today at FEMA headquarters. Cut eight. Go. We're in a situation where, you know, uh, we're, uh, uh, how can I say it? There's still some deniers out there in terms of uh, whether or not climate change has anything to do with any of this. And uh, we're going to need a whole hell of a lot more money to deal with emergency appropriations, to deal with all you're taking care of. Okay. As I've said many times, it's like gun control. Evil people kill people. They immediately want to uh, scrap the Second Amendment. You have a Democrat party that is exploiting this for power. A Democrat party that is exploiting this to destroy the civil society. And this is the problem. Let me go to page 115 in my new book. Marxists, fascists, autocrats generally... Explain away the horrendous and barbaric conditions that they create. Ladies and gentlemen, that was an electric wire that broke. And that utility company was focused on the agenda that was forced down its throat by the Biden administration. And the authorities blocked off the the one road out, turned people back. Most of them were burnt to a crisp. Other authorities refused to to trigger the siren, which caused the death of many. Another withheld water. This has nothing to do with climate change. Yet they want to still appeal or attempt to appeal to the masses by focusing on the paradise they promise in the future. That is the Democrats. If only every individual surrenders their free will in part or whole 
to a small cabal of activists, revolutionaries, and ultimately autocratic masterminds who claim to speak for and represent the people. There's no better subject to illustrate such a colossal deception in today's world as climate change, which is central to the Democrat Party's growing authoritarianism over all aspects of American life. Every weather event or natural disaster that causes discomfort, damage, or death is attributed to climate change, which in turn is said to require major changes in the quality of life, the capitalist system, a reduction in economic growth and prosperity, increased taxation and regula- regulation, the surrender of national sovereignty to international governing organizations, and or the significant expanse of domestic governmental power. Now remember, I literally finished writing this three months ago. Indeed, every household product, from gas stoves, light bulbs, and dishwashers, to air conditioners, washing machines, automobiles, and anything else that uses energy, is now subject to government control. And since the time is said to be urgent, requiring instant and vast federally directed change to save the future of humanity. There's virtually no time for reflection, circumspection, or scientific and factual evaluation of past predictions and their accuracy or actually inaccuracy, the direction in which the nation is being forcibly plunged. The reason is that climate change is a politically and economically driven movement within the American Marxist framework that empowers the Democrat Party's ability to control the behavior of people. And I go through the book, some major predictions over the past half century that have been completely hysterical and completely false. The list of so-called experts, scholars, scientists, meteorologists, climatologists, professors, politicians, etc., insisting the end of the world is around the corner, most of whom blame mankind's activity particularly the success and prosperity of the United States, is endless. They were not only spectacularly wrong, but they were driven by an ideological and political agenda disguised as science. Therefore, we are to ignore all of this. Do not look back. The world begins today with new promises and predictions intended to empower the government and the Democrat Party. So language manipulation, scare tactics, and censorship are used to control and shape public debate. This is a great chapter, and it goes on, and you're going to have to grab it yourself. The Democrat Party hates America. You can get it on Amazon, but I focus a lot on this in this particular chapter. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios, and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. This word denier is very interesting. Al Gore started to use it a few decades back, that you're a climate denier. That's not by accident. The -the fill-in-the-blank denier used to be the Holocaust denier, you know, much like the New York Times on the left. You're a Holocaust denier. And that was aimed at Nazis and neo-Nazis and Klansmen and so forth. So what the Democrat Party, the media, and the left have done is they've taken Holocaust denier and they've turned it into climate change denier. You understand? This is how they manipulate minds. This is how they manipulate the language. This is how they promote their propaganda. So there can be no questions about climate change. None. Well, I'm going to question it in a big way in just a moment. I'll be right back. 
You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios, and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. The Mark Levin Show, live and national at 877-381-3811. By the way, as a side point dealing with immigration, isn't it amazing that the so-called black leaders in the black communities, the so-called Asian leaders in the Asian communities, the so-called Latino leaders in the Latino communities virtually have said nothing? about Biden's effort now to get work permits for all these illegal aliens in these cities. It will now take jobs from American citizens who are black, Latino, and Asian. You see, these so-called leaders are complete sellouts. In this nation, the media and the Democrat Party and the bureaucracy divide us into groups for the census. They divide us into groups for politics. They divide us into groups for victimization. But it's interesting that the so-called self-appointed, self-described leaders of these various groups don't say a damn thing when these people are affected, like AOC. You've got millions and millions of foreigners pouring over the border. They're going to get work permits because that's Biden's way of saying... You know, we'll take them off the illegal alien list. We'll give them work permits. Eventually, they'll become citizens. They'll vote Democrat. Meanwhile, look what's happening in these cities. Look what's happening in New York and Chicago. And every other major city in the country, Houston, Phoenix. And I could go on and on. There's no city missed. But these phony, fraudulent leaders. Look at Al Sharpton, complete klutz. Complete punk. Not a word. Nothing. Because they get their power from the Democrat Party. It's party before people. It's party before community. It's party before country. I hope people wake up to this. But I hope when they wake up it's not too late. All right, I've had this article for a few days actually. Just the news... More than 1,600 scientists, including two Nobel laureates, declare climate emergency a myth. Now, in Liberty and Tyranny, an entire chapter on this, and I called it Envirostatism. And back then, we had a list of 9,000. Here we have a list of 1,600. Why? Because they ran out of room, probably, on their petitions. Let's go on here. A coalition of 1,609 scientists from around the world have signed a declaration stating there is no climate emergency, that they, quote, strongly oppose the harmful and unrealistic net zero CO2 policy being pushed across the globe. Now, you wouldn't know this if you were watching the news tonight or last night or last year. You'd have no idea. The declaration does not deny the harmful effect of greenhouse gases, but instead challenges the hysteria brought about by the narrative of imminent doom. By the way, I challenge the harmful effect of greenhouse gases as a pedestrian, as somebody who breathes, as somebody who's listened to scientists and experts before, who were concerned that we didn't have enough greenhouse gases, and that's why the Amazon was dying. You remember all that, Mr. Producer? They don't talk about the Amazon anymore. You know why? It's lush. The jungle down there is lush. 
So now we have to find something else. They don't even talk about the polar bears anymore. You want to know why? Because they're everywhere up there. The population is, is expanding. Well, we can't talk about them. And they're not going to talk about the whales because actually they're killing the whales. By interfering with sonar communication and so forth, the climate change fanatics are killing the whales. They're also killing people. The declaration put together by the Global Climate Intelligence Group was made public this month and urges the climate science should be less political while climate policy should be more scientific. (laughs) That would be nice. It's an independent foundation that operates in the fields of climate change and climate policy. It was founded in 2019 by Emeritus Professor of Geophysics, Guns Burkhout, and science journalist Marcel Kroc. Scientists should open, openly address uncertainties and exaggerations in their predictions of global warming, while politicians should dispassionately count the real costs as well as the imagined benefits of their policy measures. Now, this is all well and good, and I'm glad they said this. I'm glad they wrote this. I'm glad this is reported by Just the News. But, ladies and gentlemen, reasoning with Marxists doesn't work. They're ideologues. This is their faith. This is their religion. Reasoning with Marxists is actually a joke. Can you reason with a Bernie Sanders? No, of course not. Can you reason with with any of these fools, AOC, the Stooges I call them? Of course not. Can you reason with a Marxist professor? No way. That's why once they take over society, like Pol Pot in Cambodia, 25% of the population was murdered. Or when Mao took over China, 60 million people were murdered. 60 million people. Look at Castro, look at Venezuela, look at all these places, look at, look at the North Korea. Obviously they don't work. The people aren't free, they're not happy. It doesn't matter. You're going to reason with them and tell them that it's not working? Of course not. They'll throw you in prison and decapitate you. So they're right. These scientists, they don't go far enough. Because greenhouse gases, without greenhouse gases, we would all die. We'd suffocate because there wouldn't be any oxygen. What are greenhouse gases? You know the biggest element in greenhouse gases, Mr. Producer? Condensation. That's water. Over 90% of greenhouse gas is water. Now, I know they don't teach this in school anymore, but they taught it when I was in fifth grade. A small, tiny percentage almost incalculable, is carbon dioxide. And I make this example all the time. You take, and it's in Liberty and Turner, you take a stadium that seats 100,000 people, and that represents, say, the atmosphere, greenhouse gases. How many of those 100,000 seats would represent carbon dioxide. Four. Four. You heard the George Carlin bit earlier. It's the most brilliant discussion of climate change ever. How does outlawing the incandescent light bulb affect the environment in any serious way? It doesn't. How about all your household products? It doesn't. It has zero impact. None. It's a power grab. Just one of the other areas, but this is the big area. Because if you can claim you're regulating water and air for the benefit of the people, you can control anything. And they've demonstrated that in the last few years. 
under Biden. And they've also demonstrated they're going to do it through the bureaucracy. They'll spit out some data, spit out some paid-for science that is developed through grants that are result-oriented. These 1,609 experts are going to be totally ignored. Why? Because you're dealing with a Marxist revolution, that's why. It's the degrowth movement. And here's the deal. When you actually read The Democrat Party Hates America, you're going to see this as part and parcel of an entire movement. I explained that the civil rights movement is no longer about civil rights. It's the civil rights Marxist movement. You're going to see that the war on capitalism is a war that resonates throughout the Democrat Party, throughout their agenda. Look at the capping of prices on drugs, the destruction of fossil fuels. And we can go on and on and on. These things aren't coincidental. They're not by accident. They're man-made. They're purposeful. Then the Democrat runs and says, look how we saved you on drugs. But I can't get this drug or that drug. Oh, that's the pharmaceuticals. That's those companies. Remember? Shortages of baby formula? Whose fault was that? Oh, that's the company's formula. No, it wasn't. We found out later that it wasn't. How about the price of gas? Remember he blamed Putin for the price of gas? No, Putin's a monster, but he has nothing to do with the price of gas in America. He never has. We were energy independent. Putin was a joke. But the prices are going through the roof. They want to take no responsibility for that either. Price of food is going through the roof. Fertilizer. Price of fertilizer is enormous. That's passed along. But more than that. Fertilizer. Energy. Diesel fuel. That's what truckers use. Diesel fuel. The cost of everything's going through the roof because it's being regulated, capped out of existence. I call this socialism, economic socialism through the back door. They don't actually have to nationalize businesses and so forth to get the result that they want. They're much more clever than that now. It's like Marxism. Marxism, a slow bleed. Slowly but surely. One institution after the next after the next. And now it's your kids are the target. They've always been the target. This is what they've always wanted, to destroy the nuclear family. There's no context provided when people talk about these things. For instance, these trans movement. What trans movement? What is that? One one hundredth of a percent of the population even smaller? So what's this movement? It's not a movement. The Democrat Party seized upon this to destroy the nuclear family. You destroy the nuclear family by creating confusion about what a man is, what a woman is. And worse than that, by allowing the government Look, school boards, school districts, that's the government. Making decisions about your child's gender. Coming between you and your children. We actually have courts now. Ruling that parents do not have a right. They don't have a right to know what's being discussed and done between the government and their children. This is straight out of Marx. It's in the book. That is Marxism. That's 100% what it is. That's not Americanism. So I pull this all together in the book. Look, this book isn't, you know, it's it's not like a Woodward book or there's another book out there about interviews about Biden. That gets us nowhere. Nowhere. I don't care about that stuff. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin.
You know what helps me sleep well at night? Physical gold. I'm concerned about what the Biden administration is doing, and I've decided to learn more about gold IRAs to help me diversify. Did you know you can buy gold for your IRA or 401k? Gold can't be tracked like digital currency. No one has to know what you're buying, and there's no way to print more. My best resource for gold IRAs is Augusta Precious Metals. Their track record is no less than phenomenal. Learn why thousands of Americans are getting gold IRAs as part of the retirement portfolios, and you need to contact Augusta Precious Metals and get their free guide. I'm serious. Text LEVIN to 68592. Again, text L-E-V-I-N to 68592. LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. That's AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text date and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Somebody said Biden could take some credit for the economy. Biden can take some credit for the economy. I think he should take all the credit in the world for what's going on in the economy. It's a friggin' disaster. A complete nightmare. So Bidenomics it is. As far as I'm concerned. In fact... I'm looking right now. I have here, uh, let's see. We have over 60% of the American people are living paycheck to paycheck. 61% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Inflation is still squeezing budgets. This is CNBC. The number of Americans who say they are stretched thin has remained stubbornly high, according to several reports. Federal Reserve Chair Powell recently called for continued vigilance in the fight against inflation. So as Milton Friedman, the great Milton Friedman, used to say, only government can create inflation because they control the printing presses. The private sector cannot create inflation. The consumer cannot create inflation. Trade unions cannot create inflation. Government, Biden, the Democrat Party. And Powell warns there may be even more interest rate increases to come. You hear that, folks? Now, as of July, 61% of adults still say they're living paycheck to paycheck. Slightly more than the 59% last year. Now, They like to talk about, well, inflation only went up uh, 3 4%. You need to understand, that's inflation going up on top of what it already went up. That doesn't help anything. When you have a robust economy, you don't have inflation. 78% of consumers earning less than $50,000 a year, and 65% of those earning between $50,000 and $100,000 are living paycheck to paycheck in July, up from a year ago. Of those earning 100,000 or more, 44% are living paycheck to paycheck. 70% of Americans admit to being stressed about finances. 45% of adults say they have an emergency fund, meaning 55% don't. And for those who do have emergency savings, 26% said they have less than $5,000. That won't buy you much. There it is. That's Binomics today. As of right now, I shall return. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. 
I'm going to push another movement. As you know, in this program, we've helped promote or support various movements. Let me start this one. I'm going to repeat something I said last night and that I've posted about before. Conservatives and Republicans must get together in a very serious way and figure out, as I posted this, what to do about the judiciary in Washington, D.C. Or it is more Joseph Stalin than Joseph Story, more Marx than Blackstone. The cabal of Obama, Clinton, Biden judges is literally destroying our judicial system, electoral system, legal system, and constitutional system. I've made some of my thoughts here, including a new Judiciary Act that breaks up the D.C. court cabal and strips the jurisdiction of subject matter authority in several areas and distributes them to more politically balanced parts of the country. But if this is not addressed, and soon, this small group of radical left-wing lawyers who horribly abuse their power will continue to rule like a Stalinist Politburo over the significant aspects of our society. There's literally no effort right now underway among Republicans on Capitol Hill to address this. None. Where are those 21 conservatives who stood up? Who stood up and said McCarthy was the end of the world? Where are those 21 conservatives who talk about shutting down the government, which I'm all for, but that's not the point. This is priority number one. The most powerful courts in America, shy of the Supreme Court, are in Washington, D.C. They rule on everything related to the federal government. Everything. They've been intentionally populated with the most radical, bomb-throwing, ideological Marxists from our law schools, from the government, from various organizations. They're destroying Rudy Giuliani as I speak. They're destroying Donald Trump as I speak. They're destroying the lives of hundreds and hundreds of protesters who committed no acts of violence. One of whom received 17 years federal prison sentence today. Who didn't attack anybody. How is it possible to have a Judge Tanya Chunkin on a court like this? Whose grandfather was a Marxist in Jamaica. Such a threat to the ruling British government there that they had to put him in prison for a period of time. She's made it abundantly clear. Julie Kelly's in the courtroom and hears her. That she's a bigot. Keeps lecturing. Defendants who are white about their privilege. That's not what a judge is supposed to be thinking about when there's somebody in front of her begging for mercy whose very liberty might be taken from them based on how this judge rules on a motion, the instructions she gives to a jury, the sentencing that she, that she lays out. That kind of crap doesn't belong in a courtroom. Five months for Donald Trump to prepare for this trial. And the government can't name one other case ever that's gone from indictment to full trial in five months. Not one. And, as I've explained, and I can't explain it over and over again, 
She jumped the line. The first case was the documents case in Florida. She purposely jumped the line so her case would go first. So she could get a Democrat jury in a Democrat city to convict Trump of just one count. So the Section 3 14th Amendment kooks can use it as fodder. And the media can say the convicted felon running for president. That's what she's doing. And crippling his chances by putting the date of the trial one day before Super Tuesday. Why did she do that? Because she didn't want to go second. Because that would push her case out many, 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 many months. Because Judge Cannon's case was first, and Judge Cannon set the trial date for May. We cannot have this kind of tyranny, this kind of evil in our courts who abuse the power of the judiciary, who abuse criminal procedures. We cannot have that kind of a judiciary. So what are the Republicans? Forget about the Republicans in the Senate. They don't even have enough courage to remove Mitch McConnell as their leader. He's not a leader. He's bumping into walls. He's no better than Biden. Biden defends him today. What's that tell you? This has become a humiliation. Are the Republicans in the Senate going to put up with this? Apparently so. Apparently so. There's no movement afoot. Not to remove him from the Senate. That's up to the people of Kentucky and so forth. But they voted for him to be their leader. Is that a leader? Who stares into oblivion? For 30 to 60 seconds at a time, that's a man who needs help. This is the American government. This is the American system. It's supposed to be the greatest on the face of the earth. We have old men who don't know where they are. We have old women who don't know where they are. They don't know how to vote. They can't remember what they said. They stare into oblivion. What the hell is this? This is your ruling class. And there's nothing you and I can do about it. What about term limits, Mark? Supreme Court's already spoken about that. You have to amend the Constitution to have term limits. You can't change it by statute. So let's stop pissing up the trees, okay? Let's start start really focusing on things. Pressure needs to be brought on Cornyn and Thune and Barrasso and the other empty suits. They're the cabal. They're the pallbearers who stand around that guy. They're weak. And yet, McConnell had enough wits to do a long interview. With an enemy media outlet, a a Pravda, big, corrupt, Democrat Party media outlet, trashing Trump. There he had enough ability to put his uh, brain cells together. All right, let me move back to this. If we do not get this under control, it doesn't matter what laws we pass. It doesn't matter what the Bill of Rights say. When the judge who's supposed to be not just the referee, but looking out for the rights of the defendant, is a judge for the Democrat Party and for the regime that's trying to take out the defendant. We're not America anymore. Are we going to leave it to these 12 people in black robes and the others in the circuit that were added by Obama? Are we going to leave it to them without pushback whatsoever? 
Who's the Republican in the House who's going to lead this effort? Who is he? Who is she? Where are all the tough guys all of a sudden? Where'd they go? Where are they? They're nowhere. They're nowhere to be found. Literally nowhere. This should be a priority. Not an afterthought. The populating this court in Washington, D.C. with these Stalinist bomb throwers was intentional. Populating the circuit court of D.C. with the bomb throwers was intentional. They even expanded that court and added them. And D.C. isn't even a state. The Constitution, you don't even have to change the Constitution. The Constitution gives the power right now, today, this second, to the Congress of the United States to eliminate judgeships, to move around judgeships, to create new judgeships, It gives Congress the power today, right now, to limit the jurisdiction of the court in Washington, D.C., to move subject matter to other jurisdictions in the country that are more balanced. They have the power to make that effort today. But Mark, the Senate won't go along with Biden. I don't care. Fight, fight, fight. Stop giving up. So where are the tough guys? Where are they? They're just going to beat up on fellow Republicans? Are they going to get really serious? And take on a... A cabal... Of radical Marxists in black robes. All they are are lawyers. All they are are flesh and blood. They're not perfect, are they? In fact, many of them are imperfect. There's no way Chutkin should have ever been confirmed. But she was. And she did it with the help of Senate Republicans. If they wanted to stop her, they could have stopped her. But they didn't. Where were they? Where was Lindsey Graham? Where were all the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee? And many years ago, this Judge Howell comes off of Patrick Leahy's staff. There's so much comedy up there, C-O-M-I-T-Y, that she flew through on her confirmation. Burrell Howell just destroyed Rudy Giuliani yesterday. Just destroyed him. It's going to bankrupt him? They just use these cases as an opportunity to rule. You know, we got to rule this way. I'm sorry. This is what we have to do. So there's actually something that we can at least start to do about it. Or try to do about it. And they're doing nothing. Literally nothing. The two main ways to deal with this is to break up that court. And number two, to move jurisdiction to other parts of the country. There is no reason that every matter that involves government and the District of Columbia should be heard by 12 district court judges and a panel of three circuit court judges in Washington, D.C. They have their own circuit, the D.C. Circuit. It's the most powerful court under the Supreme Court because it's based in Washington. That shouldn't be the case. That should be the case that a city has a circuit court and that that court can can oversee every damn federal act that takes place. Why the hell should we, why should we go along with that? Particularly since they're both corrupt now. Corrupt through and through. 
intellectually corrupt. You walk into that courtroom and you're a Republican, you're toast. You walk into that courtroom and you were involved in January 6th, and I don't mean violence. I mean you came into the building and left the building, or you were on the property of the building. You're toast. Your name is Donald Trump. You're toast. You work for Donald Trump. You're toast. Same with Beryl Howe. Same with Judge Jackson. Same with all these reprobates. You had a guy today, I don't know who the hell he is, who was just sentenced to 17 years in prison for pushing down a fence. Judge Kelly, we're reminded, appointed by Trump. Who cares? Cares. Cares if he's appointed by Abraham and Moses. He's an idiot. The government wanted this guy in prison for 33 years. So, they knew what they were doing, because what is, what is Kelly doing? He cuts the term in, uh, 17, we'll give him 17. The government never expected to get 33 years. So this guy gets 17 years in prison. Two Ivy League lawyers in New York, who threw a Molotov cocktail into a police cruiser and blew it up, and had more in their trunk. Same Department of Justice, one in the court. They said two years is too long for each of them. The Democrat court agreed, and they're out on the street after about a year. I guess it just depends on who's throwing the Molotov cocktail or who's pushing down the fence. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Is your cell phone in desperate need of replacement? You know the signs, right? Short battery life, so you have to have a charger on hand. Cracked screen that gives you glass splinters. Ouch. It's time to put that old phone to rest and upgrade to a new 5G Samsung Galaxy from Pure Talk for free. Get a free 5G Samsung Galaxy with two-day battery life, edge-to-edge display, and ultra-strong Gorilla Glass. When you sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, text, and 15 gig data plan for just 35 bucks a month. Plus, it comes with mobile hotspot. Get all the data you could ever need for half the price of the big carriers on America's most dependable 5G network. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just dial pound 250 and say Mark Levin for your free, super durable 5G Samsung Galaxy when you switch to Pure Talk. Dial pound 250, say Mark Levin. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. The Democrat Party and their Democrat media, of course, are as racist as they come, as Clarence Thomas. They've been trying to destroy his reputation for nearly half a century. I can assure you if he had the judicial activism and ideology of Ruth Bader Ginsburg they were defending him with every every bone in their body and they'd be accusing anybody who attacked him as being racist but instead it's the racists who are attacking him now how do I know that because I'm going to tell you and remind you a little bit about the most corrupt Supreme Court justice probably in American history who gets no attention from little Dick Durbin, the Democrat chairman of the Senate Injudicious Committee, and their hack media. But I will remind you of who she is. That is the most corrupt justice likely in American history. Is your cell phone in desperate need of replacement? You know the signs, right? Short battery life, so you have to have a charger on hand. Cracked screen that gives you glass splinters. Ouch. It's time to put that old phone to rest and upgrade to a new 5G Samsung Galaxy from Pure Talk for free. Get a free 5G Samsung Galaxy with two-day battery life, edge-to-edge display, and ultra-strong Gorilla Glass. 
When you sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, text, and 15 gig data plan for just 35 bucks a month. Plus, it comes with mobile hotspot. Get all the data you could ever need for half the price of the big carriers on America's most dependable 5G network. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just dial pound 250 and say Mark Levin for your free, super durable 5G Samsung Galaxy when you switch to Pure Talk. Dial pound 250, say Mark Levin. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Some people talk about the Tea Party. We are the Tea Party. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Oh, well. I think the, uh, the most important legal, conservative and libertarian legal groups in the country... And think tanks. Maybe Heritage Foundation will stop focusing on its support for Russia against Ukraine and spend a little bit more time on what's going on in the very heart of the city where their headquarters is. They and others, CPI, God knows who, will get together and pressure Republicans in the House and elsewhere on a very specific agenda that everybody can rally around, and I will certainly give it air cover here, to try and take our judiciary back and try and break up this Soviet-style Politburo that is controlling the Washington, D.C. courts, thereby controlling a tremendous amount of America's agenda in a way that is so abusive, that is so unethical, that it's really unimaginable if it wasn't actually happening and unfolding in front of us. I urge them, I encourage them, and I will give you airtime here. They get off your ass and do something about it. You don't need to think about projects. This is the biggest project there possibly is. It's having an effect on us. I want to thank those on radio and TV now who without attribution are regurgitating what we've been talking about here for days, if not weeks. That is, the goal now of this Judge Chunkin, or actually in her case since Monday, is to have a quick trial, get one quick conviction, and um, give uh, fuel to the Section 314 Amendment crowd. And uh, I hear that being repeated now, and that's good. It's good that people listen. It's not good that they don't have enough class to to point out where they've heard these things. But look, that's the nature of the beast. Let's just win. Right, Mr. Producer? That's just, what are you eating, a steak sandwich or something? Pretzel. You're always eating something during this. I don't blame you. It's dinner time, isn't it? Um, so that's my view of that. I think it's very, very important. You know, this book really... The Democrat Party Hates America. It really ought to be read well before the Republican primaries. It ought to be read before the general election. Uh, Because despite what these never-Trumpers say, some of whom want your support for president, and of course the media and so forth, um, we just can't afford to, to to lose this election. We just can't. I mean, can you imagine the year and a half left of this and then four more? And Biden won't serve out a term if he's elected. It's not going to happen. He's already an imbecile, legally an imbecile. They should be taking his driver's license away from him. They should be taking um, the keys to the house away from him. They should be putting a monitor on him so they know where he's shuffling off to morning, noon, and night so he doesn't get lost. Um, and I could go on and on. Maybe I will at one point. There are tens of millions of us who love our country, our families, and our freedom. And they're all under attack. In every corner of this country, there are people who think like us, who believe like us, with whom we have a tremendous amount in common. 
from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida, everywhere in between. All walks of life. Surgeons, doctors, farmers, janitors, truck drivers, doesn't matter. There's tens of millions of us. And the Democrat Party seeks to disenfranchise us. They want to decide who our nominee will be. They want to damage whomever their nominee is. They are shredding the Constitution along the way, creating all these these abnormalities in the process, pushing us where we've never gone before. They have secreted themselves, as Lenin said they should, as Gramsci, the Italian communist, said they should, as Solinsky said they should, in the key seats of power, whether the judiciary, Department of Justice, FBI, DHS, EPA, the SEC, all of them. This massive bureaucracy is populated with people who embrace this ideology. Look what they're doing on the border. It's pure, cloward and piven. Overwhelm the system. Just overwhelm it. And not Americans, foreigners, overwhelm our system. They want our system overwhelmed. And I told you why the other day. They not only want to flip Texas blue, which means game over. During the citizenship ceremonies, they're handing out voter registration cards at the same time people are being sworn in. The government is. Biden. They have... A massive surreptitious movement going on right now. You're funding it. Where the 600 departments and agencies of the federal government are being told, go out there and get people registered to vote. In underrepresented communities, whatever the hell that means. So-called underrepresented communities seem to be pretty well represented in Washington or on the courts. But they never really define what they mean anyway. They'd leave it to your imagination. That's what they're doing. He signed an executive order. There's no authority, no congressional authority. Not one penny is supposed to be spent on this, but it doesn't matter. Biden is urging... That the people who are here illegally be quickly legalized in what is the most massive amnesty movement in the history of America without a single vote by Congress. To get them to vote. They don't have to cheat, that is, illegal aliens to vote. They're going to get a a stamp of approval by the Biden administration where they have an absolute right to vote. The more, the merrier. Well, that's fraud. You go to court and they say, you don't have any evidence of fraud. You don't have any evidence of anything untoward going on. They gave people an app to download on their iPhones. That's how poor they are, you see. And they download the app, and they're told, look, before you come to the border, let us know who you are, go through the port, and we'll wave you in. And then they have the nerve, this administration, to tell us, you know, illegal entry into the country is actually quite, quite way down. Yeah, because now it's legal entry into the country through these, through these ports. But even now, the illegal entries are skyrocketing. Can you name one country... Just one that has survived without borders. Just name one. Or one country that allowed foreigners to decide if they should come into the country. What kind of a country lets individuals from around the world to decide if they get to come into our country? Only one that I know of. 
ours. There's not another on the face of the earth. Come to our country. We want to get you a job. We want to get you whatever you need. We especially want you to vote. This is all considered legit by the courts in America. By these dumb, moronic lawyers who managed to get a judgeship. And man, their egos through the roof. I don't care if they're local judges handling traffic cases. I don't care if they're divorce court judges. I don't care if they're judges that mostly handle contract cases or judges that handle everything from soup. It doesn't matter. Man, they have their own courtroom, their own clerk or clerks. They have security. Most of them have these beautifully paneled courtrooms and they have these wonderful... To be a judge is one of the coziest job, uh, jobs on the face of the earth, by the way. They don't, most of them don't write their opinions. Their opinions are written by somebody else, and they review them, and they may, you know, red mark them, and may, you know, go through them and edit them and so forth. But they're not smart enough, most of them, to actually write the draft. It's like most authors, most conservative authors. They're just not smart enough to write a book. So they have other people write their book, and they kind of go through it. That way they can at least say, that's my book. I can't live with myself. I don't do that. It's the rare judge who actually does the work of a judge. Like Chunkin. I guarantee you she's not smart enough. Why? Well, look what she's doing. Look what she's doing. She's a bomb thrower. I suppose she tells the clerk, this is what I want to do, this is where I want to go, write it up, I'll go over it, I'll adjust it, I'll make my notes, and so forth and so on. That judge is welcome to come on this program and tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But she won't. She'll hide behind her, her robe. I have no respect for that woman, or no respect for any of those judges in the D.C. system, except maybe one. I won't name them because that'll ruin them. The rest of them, none. Nothing. They don't have the guts to stand up to the other judges. And what this fool judge has done in Washington has really undermined the ability of the judge in Florida to do her job. It's okay by her. She's not there. She's not worried about it. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Is your cell phone in desperate need of replacement? You know the signs, right? Short battery life, so you have to have a charger on hand. Crack screen that gives you glass splinters. Ouch. It's time to put that old phone to rest and upgrade to a new 5G Samsung Galaxy from Pure Talk for free. Get a free 5G Samsung Galaxy with two-day battery life, edge-to-edge display, and ultra-strong Gorilla Glass. When you sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, text, and 15-gig data plan for just 35 bucks a month, plus it comes with mobile hotspot. Get all the data you could ever need for half the price of the big carriers on America's most dependable 5G network. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Just dial pound... 250 and say Mark Levin for your free super durable 5G Samsung Galaxy when you switch to Pure Talk. Dial pound 250, say Mark Levin. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Let me tell you about the most crooked Supreme Court justice maybe ever. Her name is Soda some her name is Sonia Sotomayor. AP, for colleges and libraries seeking a bold-faced name for a guest lecturer, few come bigger than Sonia Sotomayor, the Supreme Court justice who rose from poverty in the Bronx to the nation's highest court. She's benefited, too, from schools' purchases of hundreds, sometimes thousands, of the books she's written over the years. Sotomayor's staff has often prodded public institutions that have hosted the justice to buy her memoir and children's books. 
or children's books, works that have earned her at least $3.7 million since she joined the court in 2009. Details of the, those events, largely out of public view, were obtained by the AP through more than 100 open record requests to public institutions. The resulting tens of thousands of pages of documents offer a rare look at her and her fellow justices beyond their official duties. Now notice, she will not be criminally investigated. Forget about ethics rules. She's using her government-paid-for staff. Remember how the Southern District of New York and the SEC is investigating Elon Musk, who's in the private sector last time I checked, wondering if this, this glass hexagon or whatever he's building is really more for him than it is for the business? How about when a Supreme Court justice uses taxpayer-funded staff to make money? Notice there's no special counsel, and notice there's no U.S. attorney looking into her. In her case, the documents revealed repeated examples of taxpayer-funded court staff performing tasks for the justices' book ventures, which workers in other branches of government are barred from doing. But when it comes to promoting her literary career, Sotomayor is free to do what other government officials cannot because the Supreme Court does not have a formal code of conduct. That is a lie. Misappropriation of government funds has nothing to do with who you are. Nothing. This is one of the most basic tenets of ethics laws that protects taxpayer dollars from misuse, said Kedrick Payne, a former deputy chief of the Office of Congressional Ethics. That's not the person you talk to. They need to dust off one of these intelligent, not blowhard, but intelligent former federal prosecutors. When Sotomayor is invited to participate in a book program, Chambers staff recommends the number of books, that's her staff, for an organizational order based on the size of the audience so as not to disappoint attendees who may participate. Books being uh, available at the event, says the court. That's a lie. The documents obtained by AP show the justices' conduct spans their conservative-liberal split. Yeah, but Sotomayor is a standout. When it comes to being a crook, she is, in my view, the best. The best. They put in long hours, accommodated the shifting requests of Sotomayor's court staff. Then as the public cost of hosting the event soared almost tenfold, a Sotomayor aide emailed with a different urgent concern. She said the organizers did not buy enough copies of the justice's book, which attendees had to purchase or have on hand in order to meet Sotomayor after her talk. For an event with a thousand people, and they have to have a copy of Just Ask, one of her books, to get into the line, 250 books is definitely not enough, said the taxpayer paid for aid, Ali. Families purchase multiples, and people will be upset if they are unable to get in line because the book required is sold out. It's not an isolated push. Sotomayor prepared for a commencement weekend at the University of California Law School in Davis. Her staff pitched officials there on buying copied, uh, copies of signed books in connection with the event. Before a visit to the University of Wisconsin, the staff suggested a, a, uh, a book signing. And not only that, not only has she said made millions, her publisher, Penguin Random House, according to the AP, has had many cases before the court. That Sotomayor has ruled on, participated in, and has not recused herself. How come little Dick Durbin of, of Illinois is not interested in this? Or the media? He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. We'll have uh, Governor DeSantis on a little bit. I want to focus on uh, what's going on in Florida. After the hurricane cut through the state there, you know, he's getting a lot of accolades. DeSantis at a press conference today on what's going on in Florida. You know, it's amazing. 
it's come to the point in Florida with this Governor DeSantis that people expect it to be handled as well as any human being can handle it. Isn't that true, Mr. Producer? And there's a reason for that. This guy's a can-do guy. That's what he is. That's what he does. So let's start with this. Cut 11, go. And I've told all of our personnel at the state level, you know, you you protect people's property and and we are not going to tolerate any looting in the aftermath of a natural disaster. I mean, it's just ridiculous that you would try to do something like that on the heels of an almost category four hurricane hitting this community. I'd also just remind potential looters that people you never know what you're walking into. People have a right to defend their property. Uh, This part of Florida you got a lot of advocates and some proponents of the Second Amendment, and I've seen signs in different people's yards in the past after these disasters, and I would say it's probably here. You loot, we shoot. You never know what's behind that door. If you go break into somebody's house and you're trying to loot, uh, these are people that are going to be able to defend themselves and their families. So, so I would not do it. Uh, we are going to hold you accountable from a law enforcement perspective at a minimum, and it could even be worse than that, depending on what's behind that door. So let's all band together and lift people up and not try to take advantage of a difficult situation. Have you ever in your life heard a governor talk like that? It almost sends chills down your spine, doesn't it? Remember Chris Matthews with the leg and all the rest of it? I won't go that far. (coughs) But seriously... You know, in Florida, you have the right to carry a weapon. And he's saying, you go into these houses, you might get killed. And you might deserve it. So I don't recommend you do it. Have you ever heard of a governor who talks like that? Kemp in Georgia doesn't talk like that. I don't know why people keep talking him up. First of all, he's not running for president. Secondly, he doesn't strike me as that bright. Does he you, Mr. Producer? In fact, he strikes me as kind of stupid. Uh, no, no offense. And no, it's not his accent. or his, He just strikes me as kind of stupid. But nonetheless. Cut 12, go. What's your personal assessment after traveling around the state today? What, what have you seen? What do you make of the damage? Well, I've seen a lot of really heartbreaking damage. I think when people lose um, a church, when they lose their home, when they lose a business, uh, you know, you can see. I mean, this was really... The, the, the day after the impact, uh, a lot of these folks in like Horseshoe Beach, they came this morning uh, to see. And so it was all very raw when you have your whole life's work into, say, like a business, it ends up under five feet of water. I and mean, that's a lot of work that you've got to do going forward. So I think that it was something that was uh, really difficult for a lot of people, for me to see, for Casey to see. Uh, but uh, we're going to come back and we're going to get everybody back. And that's going to happen, so I know it's not easy now. I know it's going to be a lot of work, uh, but we will get everyone back on their feet. Say what you will, this guy's a stellar governor. Absolutely stellar governor. Jared Moskowitz is a Democrat. Uh, He replaced this guy, Ted Deutsch, I think. He was in Congress a long time, another Democrat. And so uh, Moskowitz was on CNN yesterday. He's the former Florida emergency director. He was appointed to that post by Governor DeSantis. Now, I don't know that if he knew he was a Democrat or he was interested in politics or anything else. But he would go from there to run in the Democrat primary for the seat that this guy Ted Deutsch gave up, which is a fairly moderate Democrat district. So he's interviewed on CNN, this Moskowitz. Cut 13, go. The governor's doing a good job on, on emergency management. And he has since he came into office. He really understood that emergency management in Florida w- w- needed to be the top agency in the country. In fact, on the very first day that, that I took over uh, in 2019, the very first place we went to was Mexico Beach. And quite frankly, uh, the government in Florida, including the governor, has poured hundreds of millions of dollars into building the greatest emergency management agency of any state in the state of Florida. And they're battle tested, right? They just did Ian uh, a a year ago. And so, you know, the state of Florida is on top of emergency management. We have to be when you have storms like Michael 
Ian, and now Dahlia all in a four-year period. Uh, but look, you know, the state's, the state's doing a good job. You know, we've had a couple loss of life, but that's been kept down to a minimal. I think a lot of lessons learned uh, from Ian. A lot of people listened and heeded those evacuation warnings. But look, we're not out of the woods yet. You know, the, the immediate response is still ongoing before they eventually transition to recovery. I mean, it's, it's incredible how this state manages these disasters. It's also incredible how this state has completely changed its voting system under DeSantis, where the votes actually come in, and by 11, 11, 30 at night, you know who's won and who's lost. And there's no fraud. It's amazing how he's broken the backs of the teachers' union. Everybody talks about it. Because they were resisting everything he wanted to do in the classroom, which is actually teach kids and not poison their minds. And he's even taken on Disney. Not because he wanted to, because Disney decided, which is headquartered really by executives in Los Angeles, Iger, then another guy, now Iger again, they, they, they were going to use their, their clout in Florida to fight on behalf of the indoctrination of children. And so DeSantis says, okay, you want to do that? Let's do it, and you'll lose. And he is very compassionate. Mark, you sound like you like him a lot. I like him a lot. Nikki Hale is getting a ton of attention because she's on the warpath against Vivek Ramaswamy. Not that I don't blame her. She's not running on her record. What is her record in South Carolina? She doesn't even tell us. And she's very moderate on abortion. You can tell, even though she's dressed it up as the most rational argument there is. Okay, great. What's her record? Eight years. What's your record? Who knows her record? Who's not from South Carolina? Very few people. Very few people. Folks, I call them as I see them. And as they say, the old line is action speaks louder than words. I'll be right back. Mud Love In. Kevin is going to be a little late. I can imagine why. So when he does come to us, I will let you know. In the meantime, let's take a call. Do we have a great caller out there? Yeah. On the Mark Levin app, Ed, Las Vegas. We could be interrupted any time, Ed. Go right ahead, please. All right. Thank you. Um, I agree with you about all of the, that you have said about the Democratic Party being a Marxist organization. They are clearly subverting our Constitution and taking power expressly forbidden to the government. Are there any laws left over from the McCarthy era that we can use to prosecute these offenders and brand the party? Now, let me ask you a question, Ed. Who controls the prosecutors? Right, but who can... There's no but. They control the prosecutors at the federal level. (laughs) They control the prosecutors. So it doesn't matter how smart the point is or how many laws there are. It's not going to happen. Well, every sheriff in the United States is uh, under oath to support the Constitution, number one. So what do you want them to do? Citizens' arrest is also... There's not going to be a citizen's arrest, Ed. And then what? Citizens' arrest. How would this work exactly? Um, when you have enough people who understand the laws and know that our... Oh, but I'm, I'm wondering, what are we going to do? We're going to go around and start a, have a citizen's arrest against what? Against the judge? Against the attorney general? I mean, you think this is going to actually be productive? Well, whoever at the time is probably the most uh, subversive would be the first to go. I'm not understanding. All right, thanks for your call, my friend. I'm just not understanding. People throw out things like citizen's arrest. 
you're going to arrest the attorney general with a citizen when he's surrounded by the FBI? I mean, how is that actually going to work? I want ideas that, that have the potential of actually at some point being effective. Maybe it's not today. Maybe it's not tomorrow. Maybe it's five years from now. Citizen's arrest is not going to get us there. Or telling Biden's prosecutors to prosecute people, that's not going to get us anywhere. Telling Republican members of the House they get off their ass and do something, that's a start. That's a start. Or litigating against them outside of their strongholds, that's a start. All right, do we have it? All right, the governor's in an emergency briefing. We understand it. No pressure. Let us, uh, do we have another caller, please? I don't have my call screen. WCBN, Ron in Baltimore. How are you, Ron? Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Yeah, Uh, my question is about, as you know, uh, the Constitution explicitly forbids a thing called a Bill of Attainder, which uh, is a law that you pass against. It's a law that's passed directed at one individual, correct. Correct. And it seems to me that these prosecutions against Mr. Trump are functionally equivalent to that. No, they're, they're not, not. The same thing, but... The Bill of Attainder fun- is something that Congress is prevented from doing under the Constitution. It has absolutely nothing to do with the executive branch. You there? I was hoping he could use it as a uh, defense. Okay, two things on this. Number one, he can't. Number two, he's going to use it in a defense against a a judge who's already uh, violated, in my view, her oath of office and the way that she's handling her case. What you want to do is you want to bring motions that, that number one, are motions that are supported by the Constitution, not that are going to be thrown out by every court in the country. If a, ju- if, a, if a lawyer were to file a motion about a bill of attainder, they'd probably lose their license because they'd say, what does that have to do with this? Well, it affects the same. No, 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 no. There are other motions he can file. I've talked about them here and others have talked about them if they're listening to the program. But there are other motions they can file, good motions. And we're waiting for them to do it, and I hope they do that. Thank you for their call, my friend. Who's next? Great job screening there, Steve-O. Who's next? Phil on Long Island on the Mark Levin app. Go right ahead. Yeah, hi, Mark. How you doing? Okay. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about what's going on on Long Island. I don't know if you're familiar with Block Island off Long Island. They have now put five wind farms up there, and they plan on putting over 100 off Montauk Point to come around by William Floyd Parkway and Shirley to connect to the substation in Holtzville. Who's putting them in there, by the way? The uh, state or the feds? South Fork Wind Farms. LA. No, 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 no. I mean the state or the feds. Who's putting those wind farms in there? It's got to be the state because the state has to approve it, and so does the town. Well, the state doesn't have to approve it if the feds are doing it. That's why I'm curious who's doing this. I guess effectively it doesn't matter, but you've got to know how to fight it. They're doing this all over the country, all over the seaboards, these beautiful, beautiful ocean views. They're going to kill more and more whales, and all of a sudden they don't care about whales. I remember watching this show where they used to have, you know, the late Bob Barker, who uh, used to fund one of these groups. They used to go around and block the Japanese from, you know, harpooning whales. And it was a fascinating show, fascinating to me. I couldn't stop watching it. And you feel for these whales. You know, I'm no PETA, that's for sure, but I believe in animals. And I love animals. And so the bottom line is this. These environmentalists, these radicals, they're killing these whales. And they're killing other animals, too. But really, it's all a a farce. It's all a charade. It always has been. It's just about uh, destroying our energy system, destroying the capitalist system. I know this doesn't really make sense to most people, but this is what they're doing. So you have to rely on them so they have more control and redistributing goods and so forth and so on. Right. All right, my friend. I'm sorry to hear about that. I appreciate it. Who's next? 
WWTK Alfred, Lake Placid, Florida. Go right ahead, please. Hi, Mark Levin. How are you doing? Let me look. I'm doing great. Thank you. Oh, that's good. You had to look at yourself. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, um, that lady that is the... Shut um, your radio off. Most, um, Shut your radio off. On the... Can't hear uh, me. On the D.C. court. Yes. That, um, do you worry that she um, hears your show sometimes? And that if she she's smart, she listens to, to the show, and she'll educate herself. But I don't think she's smart. I don't think she cares to educate herself. I don't worry about it in the least. What is she going to do? Send somebody out here to arrest me? We'll be right back. Yes, it's true that Mark Levin is the fastest growing radio show in America. The Mark Levin Show is on at 877-381-3811. Governor, you don't, uh, you didn't have to call in. It's very, very kind of you. We appreciate it. No, no, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I um, hope you guys are doing well. We're doing great. So give us a lowdown on, what's, on what it looks like tonight. Well, yesterday, uh, about um, 8 o'clock in the morning, we uh, got hit with almost a Category 4 hurricane that hit the Big Bend part of Florida, um, and it um, had significant storm surge. Uh, Since that time, uh, we've been able to restore uh, about 450,000 households to power. Uh, There's currently about 130,000 that are without, mostly in that ground zero area. A lot of them are rural counties. Uh, so we have tens of thousands of additional linemen that are working to do those restorations. So we anticipate seeing uh, a lot of those people uh, online over the next uh, few days, which would be really, really good. And then, of course, you know, we've been doing search and rescue. Fortunately, uh, there there hasn't been any confirmed fatalities from the direct impact of the, of the storm uh, in those coastal areas. We did have one for a traffic accident far away uh, that, that did involve the storm. But I think people heeded the warnings, and some of those areas are very vulnerable areas. I think people just got out of Dodge. There, I've been able to tour all the um, really uh, hit, hard-hit areas today. We did a tour, and, uh, you know, there was some, some significant surge. I mean, it got up. Uh, you could see the water line on places uh, four, five, six feet up. So that's definitely can, can be life-threatening if you're, if you're, not, if you're uh, not taking precautions. But we've done a lot of rescues, but they haven't really been people that were necessarily going to die. They just got stranded uh, in the floods. Uh, so we have urban search and rescue teams, National Guard, everybody mobilized. So, you know, this is just what we do, Mark. I mean, you know, being a Florida guy, that, uh, that these things happen. So it's something that we prepare for. And uh, when it's time for us to act, we do. And we're able to help get people back on their feet uh, as quickly as possible. You know, you had this gentleman, Moskowitz, who's a Democrat congressman, relatively moderate, actually. You had appointed him, I guess, before he got into politics to handle um, some of these sorts of things. And he had nothing but praise for you. And um, you get elected governor. Was this like priority number one or in the top three or something, how you could beef up your emergency uh, response and so forth? Sure. I mean, and Florida has traditionally done a good job, um, particularly with some of the, um, you know, Hurricane Andrew in 92, Cat 5 was not handled well. Uh, you started to have successive governors after that put more emphasis on it. And so, so we have had a good track record of it. But I came on the heels of Hurricane Michael, which is a Category 5 hitting the Panama City. And so we said, okay, you know, what has Florida done well? What, what do we need to do better? Uh, and we went ahead and said, we're going to do it. So you learn in each different uh, iteration uh, other things uh, that, that can be done. I mean, one of the things we did with Hurricane Ian last year was we said, you know what? I've got a massive budget surplus here. I've got I'm paying I've paid down almost 25% of our state's total debt since I've been governor. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and not help people because I'm waiting on FEMA or waiting on the federal government. So we took on our own missions like temporary housing. We actually would work with residents down in Southwest Florida to do the travel trailers. So if you know if your house gets flooded 
you got to gut it, it's going to take time, or you got to repair the roof. It may not be habitable right at that moment. It may take it may take a couple months even. Well, rather than stay in a hotel or have to move somewhere else or stay in some like RV city somewhere that FEMA would create, so why don't we just put a travel trailer in your front front uh, lawn? You can stay on property, do your uh, repairs, have a place to stay. So people really like that. And so we're going to be introducing those into some of the hard-hit areas on this time. People are really excited about getting the opportunity. But it's basically just how can you make a difference and then go execute and get it done. And we don't have tolerance for bureaucracy and for red tape. I mean, I just tell the guys, when we had the, the bridges got knocked out in southwest Florida uh, last, uh, last September, People said it was going to take six months to be able to repair these bridges. And I was like, well, that's just totally unacceptable. It was not our bridges at the state level. They were local bridges. Some people were talking about getting federal money. I'm like, what the hell do I care about about the federal money? I'll, I'll do it. we got to get these people back on their islands. And so the one bridge they thought would take months, we did in three days. Sanibel Causeway uh, was broken in three different places. And from the time we took over the job, we were able to open it back up in in two weeks. So, you know, I think a lot of it is just planning on what is what could happen and then how do you respond, clearly prevent loss of life. All that is number one. But then you got to look at it and say, okay, even in a Category 5 storm like Ian, you look at southwest Florida – the vast majority of people did not have catastrophic damage uh, or even had any damage um, uh, there, even though it was one of the most costly storm ever. So if you can get the services back up quick, the electrical, all that stuff going, that just creates a sense of calm in the community. You know, you'll have some of these storms in other parts of the country they can have like a modest storm, and sometimes people will be without power for two or three weeks. Well, you do not want to be in that situation. So we've had a very rapid restoration of power this time to do several hundred thousand on the day the storm hit the state um, is, is pretty good. It really is remarkable. Um, do these sorts of things, because you have to put in, you know, 24-7, do they wear you down I mean, it's like, oh, my God, here's another hurricane. Or do you go, okay, let's get ready. Let's put the suit on for battle. Well, you, 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 I think both. I mean, you, you obviously, when it's go time, it's go time. And emergency response is just something that we do. But, for example, yesterday I got into the emergency operations center at, uh, at 10 to 4 in the morning. And so we were there uh, going on over everything. We didn't know if we were going to get hit in Tallahassee directly. There was a path that said we were going to get the eye wall. We ended up not doing that. Uh, so we're having to make sure we can have continuity of operations where we are, but then, of course, uh, helping out with other stuff. And so we did that. And, I mean, I went from, you know, 3.50 in the morning till, till probably 9.30, 10 o'clock um, at night. And so, you know, it, it, it does get tiring. It does wear on you, but it's just something that you do. You do the adrenaline, um, and then you go. And we've had – I mean, we've had Hurricane Ian, of course. We've had this one. We had the Surfside Tower collapse, the condo collapse. You remember right. that. That right. was not obviously a hurricane related, but that was, we, we, we snapped in. That was a full on emergency response. And then we treated COVID like an emergency response. We did not have our Department of Health in charge. Uh, of doing things like, you know, monoclonal antibodies. I had my emergency response people uh, doing that because logistically they were very sound and they could get they could get this done. So we got to the point where if a community needed mono, some treatments for COVID, monoclonal antibodies, you know, within like 36 hours, I could have a site set up. Uh, and that's because these guys know how to respond to things. And I notice you don't blame other things or other people or other levels of government. You just jump in, right, with, with, the, with your sleeves rolled up. Yeah, I mean, look, when, when people's livelihoods are I, – I, so I was in Horseshoe Beach. It's in Dixie County, Big Bend. And, you know, I, I show up, and it was, it's a hard-hit area. So first I meet with parishioners from the First Baptist Church there. I go into the church. Water had gotten four or five feet. All the pews are ruined. Everything is ruined in the church. And this is just something that, that they had relied on for so many years. Um, and, you know, so it's sad. And you see that. And you see how that affects people. Then I go uh, across the street. One of the parishioners, she lost, she lost basically everything in her house. Um, and this is what she had, had saved for. She was retired. 
and and all of a sudden you got four or five feet of water in there. Uh, and then I went down a couple couple blocks further. Some of the businesses uh, got wiped out. There's one the, the Horseshoe Beach has one restaurant, and it had massive amounts of water. They had to gut everything, and so it's just like and this is like the, these people just got back today because they had evacuated yesterday, so they got back today. So it was all very very raw, um, and you see that. And I'm just like you know what. I'm not, I don't care about the media. I don't care about kind of the political uh, posturing. It's like you've got to be a leader. You've got to stand up. You've got to help these folks. And so that's just kind of how I do. I don't really have time for the pettiness. I usually don't get into that anyways, but particularly in an emergency situation, you just got to get the job done. Well, I mean, it is remarkable what you've been able to do, what your team does. Um uh, and I and I just said, you know, even before this hurricane hit, I said the people of Florida know they have somebody who's going to do everything humanly possible. I mean, you can only do so much, but there are things that can be done that often are not done, Governor. So I want to thank no, you for exactly. taking a little. Yeah, I, I, I want no, to thank I, you. For, I think that's yeah. the thing. I think when people see you show up, when they see you're doing uh, all that you can, they appreciate it. And I have people to this day will thank me for being in southwest Florida uh, last, uh, last year when they had that. Uh, people know, they, they can tell when you're, when you're leading, when you're working hard, uh, rather than just going through the motions. And when they see that, they appreciate it. And, yes, you can't just snap your fingers and fix every problem, uh, but you can make a difference if you're willing to cut through the BS and the bureaucracy and just focus on results. Yeah, well, you know what they say, action is... Uh more important than words, and you've demonstrated that, Governor, and I want to thank you very, very much as a Floridian and wish everybody there Godspeed and, uh, and keep up the great work. And if people want to help the victims, there is a FloridaDisasterFund.org that you can donate to. It's raised several million dollars. You know, this is not government. This is private charity um, that's managed by Volunteer Florida, and it can help meet some of the needs that a government program can. And, of course, we don't want to rely on the federal government. So FloridaDisasterFund.org, we did $63 million for the victims of Hurricane Ian, which was very, very helpful for a lot of those people, and we'll do the same uh, with whatever money is raised uh, for the victims of Hurricane Idalia. I remember we posted those. Let's let's post them on all the social sites, Mr. Producer. We'll do that, Governor. And God bless you, my friend. Best to you and your family and everybody in Florida. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Take care. You too. Well, let him speak for himself. What do you think? Exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. show went too darn fast. I had a lot more I wanted to discuss. The governor DeSantis is, uh, is a remarkable governor. He truly is. And uh, we have remarkable governors all over the country, but I call him America's governor. Just like Rudy was America's mayor. They're trying to destroy America's mayor. You believe that? They're trying to put him in prison. The Democrat Party, that's why it needs to be exposed. That's why I wrote this damn book. The Democrat Party hates America. You've got to understand. And listen, I think you understand. I'm just put, I want to put more meat on the bone. So we can do something about it. And one of the things we can do is go into, when we talk to other people and other communities and so forth and so on, say, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. you keep voting Democrat. Do you know what they've done? To black people? Do you know what they've done to Latino people? Do you know what they've done to women? Do you know what they've done to Asians? Do you know what they've done to white people now? Do you know what they've done? Do you know who they are? Do you know? They didn't lead any civil rights movement in the 60s and so forth. We need you, folks. We need you. We cannot rely on the parties. We cannot, cannot rely on the politicians. We need you, folks. That's all I'm saying. I talk in this program about leaders and statesmen. Now, you'll pick whomever you want to vote for. It's fine by me. It's fine by me. Maybe you want to vote for Asa Hutchinson. And again, maybe you need your head examined. But, you know, it's up to you. It's up to you. 
Maybe you want to vote for Donald Trump, who was a great president and would be a great president. Again, and what they're doing to him is disgusting. Nobody discusses that more than I. But that doesn't mean you have to trash all the other candidates, particularly one other candidate. You know, the big guys, the big dogs, they'll duke it out. We're not the big dogs. You just heard from this governor of Florida what he's doing, what he's been doing. There's a reason why the radical left-wing phony civil rights groups want to destroy him, that the teachers' unions want to destroy him, and so many others want to destroy him. We wish you people in Florida and all the rest of the coastline all the best. We really do. If you got a chance, the Democrat Party hates America. It's there at Amazon. It's waiting for you. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you next tomorrow. God bless.